start the service. Hey, hallelujah. God bless each and every one of you. It takes a whole church to bring the spirit together and I believe let us continue in that same spirit. Amen. God bless you, praise his team. God bless you, Sister Michaela, for the worship and God bless you, Deacon Samokra, for today's opening prayer. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. We give God all the glory for bringing us into another Sunday service. I believe that already you have been blessed and the blessings will continue to pour in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Everything we do is done to worship our Lord from our praises to our worship and even to our testimonies. So is there anyone here who is willing to testify to the goodness of what the Lord has done this week, this month, and even this year, even though there's only been 23 days of the year. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I thank God for adding another year to my year. Um, we are getting older. Um, so why there was... <laughs> we are getting older, yeah. Um, Wednesday was another year to my years, and I want to thank God for what he has been doing and what he will continue to do over my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. What do we say to our brother Joe? Happy birthday. Happy birthday. I'll make sure the praises team wish you and sing a happy birthday to you later, because my voice isn't that good. Amen. Is there any more people who want to testify to the goodness of the Lord. Anyone? Song testimony, uh, exaltation. Amen. We thank God for the goodness of what he's done for each and every one of us. 
And we pray that the Lord will continue to provide us with things to testify to his glory. Amen. Um, the word of God is about to come. So let us be silent. Let there be peace in the room for, to allow the spirit to come and to speak to us and to testify. With that being said, um, we'd like to introduce the speaker for the day, who is none other than our beloved presiding elder, Elder Abraham Adler. A very good afternoon to you all. Oh, good afternoon. We are Church of Pentecost, but the greetings should be greetings. Many a times we will stand here and say, praise the Lord, oh, hallelujah. I am also, div <laughs> I'm also divinely obliged to say good afternoon to you all. I hope you are all doing well. We thank God for that. Before I start sharing what God has laid upon my heart to share with the congregation, please come for the microphone. Um, I would want you to take the microphone around. So, I want two teenagers, two young adults, maybe two adults. What I would want you to do is you tell us, assuming God is standing in front of you right now, what would you say to him? What would you want him to do for you? So as for the teenagers, I can call some few people so that they will talk. Uh, Sylvia, yes, Sylvia, don't shake your head. Okay, so why do you come to church then? God is giving you an opportunity to tell him what he should do for you. You are shaking your head. This is incredible. Wow, then why are you in church? This is, this is serious, you know? Okay. I wouldn't want to call anybody again. Tell me, if, in case you have got God standing in front of you right now, what would you want him to do for you? I want two teenagers, two young adults and two adults. Um, I would like the Lord to give me knowledge to understand his word. Thank you. Fantastic. That's okay. Thank you. One thing. She said she would ask God, God, give me knowledge to understand your word. This is a good request. Any more? One more. One more. Okay. I will ask God to see. Um, I want more of him. No more of him. Okay, so our sister who is in the range of the young adults, she will tell God that God, we hear from you far, far away, but I want to feel you more. I want to know more of you. Lovely. Yes, one more um, young adult. I would want God to give me wisdom. Fantastic. Our sister is saying that she would want God to give her wisdom. Wisdom. The 30 pluses. The 30 pluses. Yes, our brother Joe. One of the questions that if I was to God, I want to ask is the mysteries around certain things that happen. Like, why is it like the world, we are chaos here about? Why, why his concern? Why is it that there are certain things that he's hidden from humanity? So that would be my sort of question. His is not going to be a request, but it's going to be a, an answer to his mind-boggling question. Why are those chaotic things happening in the world? Why you stay silent? I need an answer. Fantastic. One more. To increase our faith. Our brother, Tim, He's saying that he will tell God to God, please increase my faith. One more teenager. Um, I will ask God to open my eyes and my ears. Fantastic. 
We bow before your throne, waiting for your touch, Lord. Anoint us with fresh oh, yeah. We bow, we bow before your throne. of his people. Even though we don't see him face to face, but God dwells in the midst of his people. And any burden that we have, any request that we have, he is in the midst of his people to grant to us our request. We are going to pray right now, beloved. Some are saying they want to ask God, God, please increase my knowledge so that I will understand your word. I'm sure that is your prayer as well. Many have asked that God, please give me knowledge, knowledge to live, knowledge to understand, knowledge to do everything that I want to do. Give me the wisdom. That is your prayer as well. Some have asked that God increase my faith. Because I am even pushed here and there. Even though I know that I belong to you. But every time, every now and then, my faith are shaking. But increase my faith. We are going to pray this prayer before you hear anything that God wants you to hear. In the name of Jesus, please be on your feet. Be on your feet. Be on your feet. Paka basuki anda balade. Mahande brosi kababalada. Lembaluki yanda rabaka dere yanda ba mahanda raka dere yade in the name of Jesus 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 kabali yade I hear thy welcome voice that calls me on to thee. For cleansing me the precious blood that flows from Calvary. I hear that word of voice that calls me out to thee. For cleansing. Oh, God. 
God is in the midst of his people. You who is asking for wisdom. You who is asking for knowledge. You who is asking for faith. God has granted it. He has granted it. He has granted it. Just receive it. Just receive it. Just receive it. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, weaknesses are all over. Weaknesses are all over. Lord, you consume our weaknesses. Consume our weaknesses. Open your blood and in abundance. Change our destiny. 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 In the name of Jesus. Baptize your people. We thank you for your presence in the name of Jesus. Please take the camera. Amen. We are serving a living God. The man who is always alive. The man who hates sin, but at the same time, he has the power to forgive sins. Can you imagine? No sinner is supposed to be allowed in his courtyard. But this same person, a sinner will approach the doorpost. He will tell you that your sins are forgiven. What a mercy from God, we serve. Beloved, today, I'm sure what I'm going to talk about, all of you might have just seen. This is just a snapshot of what we are going to learn today. I begin my, what God has laid upon my heart to share with you. Honestly, ordinarily, I am not supposed to be the preacher for today. But you know, as a presiding elder or as an elder or an officer of the church, one of our responsibility is for us to be always on guard. So that in case something happens, you'll be called upon to take the place. And that was exactly what happened. This slot was supposed to have been covered by somebody, but due to exigencies of life, I was called last night that something is good, something is happening. I might not be able to come. At that time, who do I call to get prepared for something like that? Late. But thank God that we serve a God who gives insight into his own word. So today I begin what God wants me to share with you with a question. I begin with a question. I think they will project it on them. As, as you see, that's sort of been, always been my style. The question is, who equips the church to function effectively? As you are all aware, the whole year as a church, we'll be talking about equipping the church as an army to possess nations. So that would be that is the main theme for the year 2022. Equipping the church as an army to possess nation. When I had the opportunity at the beginning of the year and I spoke of the church, God laid upon my heart to look at the soldiers in the army of the Lord. If you remember, soldiers in the army of the Lord. We looked at the characteristics of a good soldier. We have soldiers, but we delve more into the characteristics or the traits of good soldiers. We learned a lot about them. They should be loyal. They should be obedient. They should know the commander's voice. They should be able to, you know, um, withstand, devoid any obstacle. They should per persist. And lastly, 
Good soldiers are finishers. They don't just you know, fall by the roadside, they finish. So when I was told yesterday, last night, that I have to talk about it, I quickly went on my bended knees and I asked God, God, what want me to, what do you want me to share with your child? And this was dropped into my spirit. Who equips the church to function effectively? Can I get some answers? Let's, let's discuss, let's do it together. Who equips the church for the church to function effectively? Anything that you know, please just be free, raise your hand. If you have any contribution, bring it. Who equips the church to function effectively? Or who equips the church to become great army? Yes, Christopher. Um, could you say prophetic word like coming? Back prophetic back? words. Who gives prophetic words? From God. God gives through? Through man. Through man. Yeah. Well done. Spirit. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah. So our sister is saying that through God's prophetic words, through the Holy Spirit, the church can become effective. I mean, fantastic. One more. Honestly, the answer I'm looking for has come. So I move on. Holy Spirit, the equip equipper of the army. Because the answer she gave, she mentioned the Holy Spirit in. So brothers and sisters, our great enabler, our great equipper is the Holy Spirit. Sometimes when, you know, I always want to bring real life experiences to the things that I see. When I see young people in church, and they are behaving like they sit down, hands in their pocket, and sometimes they want to be forced before they talk. Let these same people sit in the classroom with the teacher standing before them. Uh, when the teachers are, teachers are saying, stop, 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 they will be talking, talking, talking. They come to church and it is as if they don't even have the mouth to speak. Young people, if you come to the house of God and you are not liberated, and you get yourself liberated in the classroom, which constitutes misbehavior, then we need deliverance. Holy Spirit, the equipper of the army, I've put into bracket the church. So this is the topic. I don't think we will talk much about that because most of us have knowledge. But what I'm not sure of is whether we really, really understand the things of the spirit. There's a quote on there, which I sourced from, uh, when you go to bible.org, yeah, for me, if I tap into anybody's knowledge, I want to acknowledge it. And that's the best thing to do before somebody tells me that I'm plagiarizing. So I have put a source on there. If you like, you can go and source it yourself as well. You have your internet. So someone um, once said, the average church member's understanding of the Holy Spirit is so vague it is nearly, nearly non-existent. And I think it is true. If you should talk to even those of us who have gathered here, if you corner us one by one and start probing us with the things of the spirit, many of us will show limited understanding. That is why I kind of agreed with what I chant on in this particular website. 
if I am not telling the truth, you know it yourself. If I'm telling the truth to you, you know it yourself. But my conviction is that many of us actually don't understand the Holy Spirit. We have limited understanding of the Holy Spirit. So in this sermon, I will try, I'm not finished. I'm still going to try something you know, small. When I get another chance, I'll continue. We are going to try, in fact, we are going to help, try and help understand or get some remedy to this um, problem. Right, so the overview, we might not, we might not complete it, but don't worry, just look at the overview that I have. Thank God that the media men are projecting everything on there. So you can look at, look at it. If you want to make any note, feel free to do it. Because so long as you are a Church of Pentecost member, there will be a point in your life where you'll be questioned about the Holy Spirit. Yes. Even if it's not your normal daily lives, a time will, will, will be coming when many of you will grow spiritually and the church will want to make you leaders. You'll be questioned. Your knowledge, your understanding of the Holy Spirit will be questioned. So use this as an opportunity to get more information, more knowledge about the Holy Spirit. After that, we're going to test the power thereof. Hallelujah. So we're just going to look at briefly, I'm not going to spare much time because many of, many of the topics, we, we have some kind of knowledge about it. So we'll be looking at the personhood and deity of the Spirit. We'll look at Holy Spirit in creation, Holy Spirit in revelation, and the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament. We'll be looking at the pre-conversion work of the Spirit. Pre-conversion work is the same as before a person becomes converted. Before a person becomes born again. The work of the Holy Spirit in the life of that individual. And then we come to the conversion work of the Spirit. That is when the change has taken place. The person has become born again how the role the Holy Spirit plays or the work of the Holy Spirit in that situation. And the last but not the least, we'll be looking at the post that is after conversion. I put into bracket the sanctification work of the Spirit. Then we look at the gifts, spiritual gifts. Okay. So this, I've given you the overview of the sermon or the overview of what I want to share. But like I said, because of time, I might not be able to cover all of them. But whichever portion that I get to, I will end. And when I get another opportunity, I will continue. Amen. And like I keep telling you all the time too, if I make any form of declaration or anything and you are not too clear, please, you can interject me, stop me, raise your heart and ask me a question. Amen. So let's begin with the personhood of the spirit or the deity of the spirit. Well, it will be a mistake for any Pentecostal not to understand that the Holy Spirit is a person. It will be a mistake. Holy Spirit, even though we don't see him as human or living objects. We don't see him as human beings. Everything that the Bible has spoken about him indicates that he is human being. So please, we don't have to use the word it to refer to the Holy Spirit. So if you have ever done that before from today, please don't refer to the Holy Spirit as it. He is he. Amen. According to the Bible. So he has the, some attributes that gives the conviction that he is a human being. Let's look at some of the attributes. He has intelligence. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 to 13. Please, you can write it down. I read it. And based on what I read, I came to the conclusion that the Holy Spirit has intelligence. I got it from the Bible. 
if we should read all of them, our time will be flying. Please write it. Or whilst you are having your tablet, your phones, you will want to read it. You can read it, and if I am wrong, I will hold my hands up. He said, that, yes, I made a mistake. But the Holy Spirit, because he is a person, he has intelligence. Only a person can be described as having intelligence. Intelligence to do all things. He's intelligent to direct us into the path of righteousness. Intelligent to convict. He has intelligence to do all things. The next attribute, he has feelings. Have you seen this microphone having a feeling? <laughs> no. I can slap the microphone. The microphone will say nothing. But go and do something against the Holy Spirit. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit who is in you. Grieve is one of those emotions, negative emotions. When you do something which is painful or when life events that we don't talk about, death, sicknesses, happen to somebody who is very close to you. You feel hurt. That is grieving. Holy Spirit can be grieved. When you read, that's what I've been quoted. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 30. Grieve not the Holy Spirit who is in you. You can check and see. If I'm wrong, let me know. The third one, he has a will. Will is the ability for somebody to make a conscious choice. Options will be pro provided you know, to you or for you. But the ability to make that choice depends on your willpower. So he has a will. Bible quotes are there. First Corinthians 12 verse 11. Acts 16, 6 to 12. It's a story. That was a story. You should be able to see it there. Where the Holy Spirit will tell somebody that, no, don't pass the goal this way. Apostle Paul, during his adventure. No, he wanted to go to Macedonia. Don't, don't go to Macedonia, go to Asia. The will of the Holy Spirit. The third one, the Holy Spirit prays. You know, remember, in this particular quote, Romans 8, 20 says, after you have prayed and prayed and prayed and prayed and your words are finished, the Bible says the Spirit intercedes for you. So the Holy Spirit prays. Have you seen microphone praying? Don't ever refer to the Holy Spirit as it again. Or when you hear anybody referring to the Holy Spirit as it, of course we have some sects or some denominations or some group of people who have different conception about the Holy Spirit. That is why I made reference to the fact that if you are a Pentecostal, the Holy Spirit should be a person for you. The Holy Spirit does miracles. Anything that you can refer to it as it cannot perform miracle. Even the living things that we, we refer to them as it. The dogs, dog. How can dog perform miracles? He is a person. He performs miracles. Acts 8, 39. The Holy Spirit can be light too. So for example, if I stand before this microphone, your microphone, yesterday, <laughs> he, he wouldn't care. It wouldn't, I mean, he doesn't even hear. But when you go like this quote over there, Ananias and Sapphira, yeah, that's Acts chapter 5, which is there. Ananias and Sapphira, they, they thought they can do 419 to the Holy Spirit. They did 419. I hope you all know the story. Yeah, they decided to sell their own property and bring the thing to God's disciple for, every, for them to share so that everybody can enjoy. After they had 
sold their property. They decided to, <laughs> they decided to pocket some. And then they presented it to Apostle Peter. Oh, this is all we got. Apostle Peter said, my friend, why are you lying to the Holy Spirit? Why are you lying? So that means the Holy Spirit can be lied to. It's only a person whom another person can lie to, not inanimate things. Okay. Holy Spirit can be insulted. Yes. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 29. Yes, people, we can, they can blaspheme, blaspheme against the Holy Spirit. We can insult the Holy Spirit. Is there. And then the Holy Spirit teaches and directs. Inanimate things cannot teach, but John 14, 26 and Acts 8, 29, it gives an indication that the Holy Spirit teaches and directs. In terms of the deity, I'm not going to talk much on that one. The deity talks about the godliness of the Holy Spirit. His nature, his true nature. As I've written over there, the Holy Spirit is equated with God. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. They are, we call them the triumph God. The triumph God. Or what most of us refer to as the Trinity. I must say that they are three different personalities, but they are one in essence. They are one in attributes. They are one by nature. That is why I've written over here, the spirit is equated with God. All the attributes that the Holy Spirit exhibits, God the Father exhibits sin. God the Son exhibits sin. So, Holy Spirit shares the same deity with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Let's read this Bible, so the one I was talking to you about, Ananias. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to light the Holy Spirit and keep back for yourself part of the proceeds from the sale of the land? Before it was sold, did it not belong to you? And when it was sold, was the money not at your disposal? How have you thought up this deed in your heart? You have lied to people. You have not lied to people, but to God. Look at him. Look at the first question. Why have you lied to the Holy Spirit? And then he comes down, the last sentence, you have not lied to people, but to God. So the Holy Spirit can be equated with God. Let's move on to the Holy Spirit in creation. Like I said, I don't want to talk that much. All I want the people of God to gather today. Many of us know, I must say, is that there's, in terms of like personalities, Holy Spirit is different from Jesus. Jesus is different from God. But there's a common denominator. That's what we call them the triumph God. They are equal in essence. They are equal in attribute. They are equal in deity. They are equal in nature. So please, Bear in mind that the Holy Spirit can be equated with God. That is their deity. Holy Spirit in creation. I want you to bear in mind that the Holy Spirit was involved in creation. So it is not today that we come to tell, oh, let's invite the Holy Spirit. Let's invite the Holy Spirit has been in existence for long, even before the creation of the, of the earth or the universe. 
In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2, as you can see from the screen. It says that in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. Now the earth was without shape, and it was it's empty. It was empty. And darkness was all over the surface of the watery deep. But, look at that one. But the spirit of God was moving in some version. They use the word hoovering. Yeah, the spirit of God was moving over the surface of the waters. Can you see? God created everything, the heavens and the earth. When there was the earth was formless with that shape and everything, you see the spirit of God hoovering. So that means that the Holy Spirit was involved in creation. God was creating the thing. The Holy Spirit was, was doing the monitoring to see that everything is in order. He was involved in creation. Another quote from the Bible from a friend of Job, Elihu. He said this to Job. He said, the Spirit of God has made me and the breath of the mighty gives me life. The breath of the mighty gives me life. So that means that the Holy Spirit has the ability to create. Even when you die, he has the ability to bring you a new life. He's involved in creation. You remember when you read the same Genesis chapter, when we two, chapter two, when we look at the creation of human beings, the Bible said that God used the dust of the earth to create human beings. And the human being was breathless, lifeless. But the Bible says that God breathed into that thing and that thing became a living being. The breath of life, the breath of God signifies the spirit of God. So the Holy Spirit is involved in creation. Again, let's look at the involvement in revelation of God's word. The Holy Spirit is involved in revelation of God's word. It's involved in the revelation of God's word. Let's see how it happens. I will always want to quote the Bible so that it will not be as if everything I am saying is for me. It is not because I have I don't have those <laughs> what it takes to, to make such pronouncement. But I get confidence in God's word because God's word is what we should believe in. So there was a declaration in the Bible by Peter and John in Acts chapter 4, verse 25. They also cited a quote in Psalm 2. They said, Master, who said by the Holy Spirit through your servant David, our forefather, why do the nation rage and the people's plot foolishness uh, foolish things? So when you read Psalm 2, you'll be able to see that the Holy Spirit spoke through David. So the word of God was revealed through David to the people. And then Peter and John also cited the same Bible quote, even though they were not there when that particular word was proclaimed. Acts 4.25 is there. Again, in citing Psalm 95, the author of Hebrew at the moment, the authorship of Hebrew has been in contention. Theologians, some theologians are saying Hebrew was written by Luke. Others do say that it was written by Paul. So for me, in order not to be in trouble, I have just written over here, the author of Hebrew. Yeah, the author of Hebrew. So if you read that it is Paul, you take it. If it is Luke, fine. But for me, it's not the authorship that is of concern to me, but the content, okay? So the author of Hebrew states, therefore, 
as the Holy Spirit says, therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, oh, that today you will listen as he speaks. So to the Holy Spirit, who is saying that? So that the Holy Spirit involved, is involved in revelation of God's word to his people. Hebrews 3, 7. You can write it down. Now the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, this will be quick. What happened in the Old Testament was that individuals were usually filled by the Holy Spirit for different kinds of services. But in the New Testament age, the indwelling of the Spirit is present, ever present, permanent. So that's the difference between what was happening in the Old Testament and what is happening in our time. In the Old Testament, the Holy Spirit can come onto somebody to do something, to perform a service. It could be that he will come with strength like he did in, in Samson's age. Samson was empowered to conquer the Philistines. Saul, who was the first king of Israel, became empowered or became filled by the Holy Spirit. He began prophesying. But after that, the same person was filled with the evil spirit. And he had to take David to the singing, sing unto the Lord a new song before the whole that the evil spirit will vamoose from the person. So then the spirit of God rushed upon Saul, like I said, and he prophesied among them. Now the spirit of the Lord had turned away, departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord tormented him. Can you imagine? So in the old days, olden days of the Old Testament, the Spirit of God will come onto a person to conduct a particular service, and once that is done, the Spirit goes away, departs. But in our time, come to the sacrificial death of our Lord and Master Jesus, the Holy Spirit comes and dwells permanently in us. Not only does he dwell permanently in you, he comes with a package. Package, say package. See? Now, let's quickly move on to we'll be finishing with this one or the next one. And we pray. We look at the pre-conversion work of the Spirit or before conversion work of the Holy Spirit. What that means is that before an individual becomes a believer, or whilst everybody is wallowing in sin, we, we were dwelling in mighty clay or enjoying life, leading lives of godly, uh, ungodliness everywhere, the Holy Spirit is still working. So what work does the Holy Spirit do? Let's look at that. The first one is the conviction of sin and truth. That is the reason why the Bible says that it takes the Spirit of God to call somebody to be saved. So before you become saved, but because, before you become born again, or before you become a Christian, the Spirit of God will have to minister to you, convict you. Your sinfulness will be revealed to you like you watching TV. You'll be sitting there, nobody knows what is going on inside of you, but you can see, you can see that I did this, I went to the crowd. You allow a guy to kiss you. You allow a guy to, you know, hold some part of your body and you enjoy it. Oh, thank you. You stole money. You were disobedient to your parents. You were rude. Your words. Look at the words that. You... And all these things will be coming when you hear the word of God. So that it is a spirit that will be convicting you. Let me ask this question. Why do you think the spirit will do such conviction? What does the spirit want from you? It's a question. Who wants to give me an answer? Phoebe, you want to give me an answer? Yes, I know you can. Pardon? I should ask the question again. 
if you happen to be in my lesson, I would have given you teacher detention straight away. You know the reason why? Thank you. The question, yes, Chris, I'll come to you with another question. So Chris wants to give me an answer. To confess your sin. To fantastic. To confess your sin and repent. So that's the reason why the Holy Spirit will be talking to you. Nobody sees, but the Holy Spirit will capture your imagination. It will capture your mind. It will capture everything about you. And while the preaching is going on, all your sins will be, he'll be convicting you of every wrong thing that you have done. With the reason that you will humble yourself so that you'll repent. That is his work. In John chapter 16, verse 8 to 10. And he, I'll put into bracket, the helper into bracket, equal to Holy Spirit. When he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. Concerning sin because they do not believe in me. They, the day over here refer to those who have not heard the word or who have heard but they don't believe. The Spirit of God will still be convicting them. The Spirit has not stopped. He keeps convict, convicting the word of sin, righteousness, and judgment. He does that because that is now his mandate that he has to convict people to come to the saving knowledge of Christ. So that's what the Spirit of God does. That is before a person becomes con uh, converted or becomes born again. He convicts sin and truth. So that is the main work. The Holy Spirit does not do any other work when it comes to the pre-conversion work. His main work before a person becomes born again is to constantly convert us of our sins. Constantly. He never stops. And the reason why, like he said, is for us to become converted. Give away your sins. Don't get hold on to it. So if you are here and there's something in your life that you, you have got, you know, you've, you've held them to for quite a long time. I believe the Spirit of God will be ministering to you right now. Then let's go. Because you are different. Because Christ is there to rescue you. Christ is there to change your destiny. He'll be talking to you. You who are sluggish. You who are, you know, indifferent. You move from here and you do something else. Everything the Spirit of God will convict you. I'm sure he's even doing it right now. And the reason is that God does not delight in the suffering of his people. But he wants everybody to come to the saving knowledge. Hallelujah. Amen. Conversion stage. What does he do? Once you have become converted. Yeah. So assuming that Emmanuel... God has spoken to you and you have decided to yield your life to Jesus and you have come to Jesus. The Holy Spirit does not stop there. He keeps working on you. What do you think the Holy Spirit will do in your life? You don't know. Good. So you are learning today. So the first, the work that the Holy Spirit does in, the, in the, his conversion work is regeneration. Regeneration. So once you have become converted, everything about you has to change. The life we live should change. And this is done by the Holy Spirit. That's what I've, I've written over here, regeneration. When you read Acts 2.38, the Bible says that he, he saved us. The he over there is God. Not by works of righteousness that we have done, but on the basis of his mercy, in some other versions, but on, by his grace. Through the washing of the new birth, the washing of the new birth, and the renewing of the spirit. So every renewal that you experience as a child of God will have to be done by the Holy Spirit. So that is the conversion work of the Holy He causes regeneration. That is why you say that Jesus on the inside is working on the outside. So once the Holy Spirit dwells in you, he will cause a change. The same person who used to be 
the person will come closer to the scent of marijuana and will say, no, 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 I don't do that anymore because I'm now a child of God. Hallelujah. He does that not because he has the ability, but it's the Holy Spirit that is working on him for that change to happen. The same Holy Spirit will tell you that don't worry, maybe you did something when you were a sinner. It resulted in, let's say, let us assume that maybe you were a young girl, you didn't know Christ at the time, you go and do all kinds of things, and you have a baby. Those will tell you that don't worry. Now you are a child of God. The mistake that you did, that resulted in what you have. Don't do it anymore. For that reason, when you go to that same person another time, the person will tell you, you know what? I am not going to make that mistake again. I am looking forward to my own man, the man who will come and marry me. There's a change. Regeneration work of the spirit. So if you are here and you call yourself a Pente church of Pentecost, there's my gun the busy member or a believer. And the same thing that you used to do, you keep doing it. That is why somebody told me, uncle, we need deliverance. The same Holy Spirit will have to deliver you because he, he has the ability to do. Peter said to them, repent each one of you and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sin and you will receive the gift of the Spirit. Without repentance, you can't receive the gift of the Spirit. Brothers and sisters, it's almost one. One pass, pass one. Six pass, fantastic. I am going to stop. I will continue at another time. The serious thing that I want us to learn, we have not got there yet. But one thing I want you to bear in mind is that you are a child of God now. We need to experience the conversion work of the spirit in you. Through the spirit, you've been baptized into the body of Christ. For in one spirit, we were all baptized into one body. Whether Jew or Greek, whether I am a Fanti, whether I am a Santi, whether you are Korean, whether wherever you are, through Christ, we are one body. Whether you are a slave or you are somebody with freedom, don't allow anything that enslaves you to keep enslaving you. Because in Christ Jesus, we have freedom. That's what the Spirit of God says. The Holy Spirit dwells in you as well. We are going to pray now. Everything that we are able to do, it is the Spirit that gives us the ability. So if as a church, we are not able to make anything becomes effective, it will either mean that we have relegated the work of the spirit to the background and we tend to depend on ourselves. We will fail. There's a difference between being baptized in the Holy Spirit and in dwelling of the Spirit. Personally, one thing that shows that an individual has experienced the Holy Spirit is to be seen in the fruit of the Spirit in your life. That you understand? One thing that will show that you have experienced the Holy Spirit is determined by the fruit of the Spirit in your life. Love should be seen in your life. Peace. You should be a peacemaker. Joy, gentleness, faithfulness, um, love. I've always made, made mention of love. Long patience, long suffering, self control. These things should be seen in the one who has the Spirit of God dwelling in him. But if, I mean, if such things are seen in all of us, our church should not worry. The church should be an effective church. But mostly, it doesn't happen. 
Why is that? Is it that we don't hear what the Spirit tells us? Or we have allowed our flesh to suppress the things of the Spirit? Let's be on our feet. I have come to Lord, I come as I
you are battling with any situation that it seems that nobody knows but you want the Holy Spirit to deliver you I want you to gather momentum gather courage and come here we are all going to pray together and we are going to ask for deliverance from on high so if you are battling with any situation as the, this song is going come and the church will pray and when we pray signs and wonders follow because we believe in a man who has been ascribed of miracles signs and wonders this mountain shall be removed this mountain shall be removed I want to repeat if there is any situation either in your life or in your family that you are battling with the Holy Spirit in the midst of his people touching and changing lives I want you to gather courage unless you want to be content and be happy with the situation that one I will not force you but if you want the Spirit of God to change that situation in your life I want you to gather courage right now and come here as the people of God pray we believe that God is able to change situation what the sicknesses what the lack of self-control anything emotional trauma mental health issues I want you to gather courage right now and the people of God will pray for you because we are serving a God who is the creator the Holy Spirit is a creator he was involved in creation he has revealed his word unto his people that he is going to change things he's going to turn things around because we serve a God who is able to change things in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus Spirit of the Lord Spirit of the living God, prove that by your people right now. And those who are standing, I want you to raise up your two hands. We are not joking here. We are not joking. We are not joking. We are not joking. The Spirit of God is here. 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 He is ever ready to change situation. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Listen to the 
the living God. You are a destiny changer. Thank you.
sweet Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for showing to us that you dwell in the midst of your people. Thank you for letting us know that you dwell in the old days and you are dwelling in our midst. You are baptizing your people, anointing your people with fresh oil. You are causing our cups to overflow. You are causing people to speak the heavenly language. Holy Spirit, thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for healing. Thank you for healing. Thank you for transforming lives. Thank you for creating into us new hearts. And renewing the right spirit within your people. Thank you, Jesus.
Amen. Amen. What do we say to our deacon Jasper? God bless you. And what do we say to our Poseidon elder? God bless you. The personification and deity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It's now time to collect our tithes and our offering. If you could please bring the bowl and put the account details on the screen. And as we
who wants to transmit to the evidence to be a presiding power. So please, let's count in our numbers and support and show them love and send them off. And that's all the announcements for the upcoming. So thank you all for listening and have an absolute blessing. Amen. We thank you so much for what Jesus has in the past year and what pastors do during our race. I want to say something small. When I was growing up and I was in the revolution, there's this thing that my dad told me. And I want to say this to everybody in the city, especially if you come to church and put your hands in your pockets, not engage. It's very like you can know, leave you with the contrast. This woman told me. He told me that all those things that people come with things that they cannot carry. Sometimes territorial spirit. Tend to be full of people. But immediately they come to the church families because of the presence of God in the church families, they can't function. So they usually move away from those who are engaging with the things of God. They can't leave them. But what they do is that they look out for those who are not engaging, those whose minds are not ready, and what they do is they draw a little bit. The reason why I believe what he told me was that it happened to some few people, but they were very bad. They were incorrigible. No matter how people try to do it, our scientists which are willing to just suggest that again, do something with what they are doing. As I'm saying to you, two of them are in prison. The two of them are in prison. One, the last time I went to her, I visited and I cried. Is battling with an incurable disease. We have tried and tried and tried and tried. Could you really imagine? Because of helplessness, his family members were taking them to be a set of a Christian. Can you imagine? So, I want to do with everybody, no people. The Christian team starts now and gives them to the God. So long as you are here, you come to the presence of God. Then whatever good things that are in the world, make sure you claim it. So that's all I want to say to the two people engage. When everyone was praying and crying, yeah, it is God. We need to go there and get out. Teach you something. Engage yourself. Don't be a spectator. So that's what we remember I was telling you that there are two things that are changing in our assembly. And I want to make it clear to everybody that things are changing. And please be involved for those changes to be effective. So, Sunday, February, not this month, next month, our meeting Bible study day again has been set aside for all of us to have Bible study. So, to be the day when the, the, the branch will come. Yeah. So, that's the day we will be all of us to meet. The purpose of the meeting was to have to stay in the world. It's not trying to stay this. Now, when we get set, definitely we will do it on time so that nobody can have a history. As you know, that's what you want. Surely we can discuss. We are not going to say that much for, because personally, one thing I don't like about the online service is that. When I pick a song, whilst I am forward, somebody will now be sitting behind. 
you will never believe that the text is the first person that the first one will do all sense. And you come to me, you have to share since I've been in that particular place, I have counted about six times. One reason that's the case. Because there's a biblical principle that even though this man has not been going to church at all, but he has allowed that principle to stick with him. And God always look at that to pave way for natural things and other buildings for him. How much more us? We are not meant to be to because many of us are on Facebook. I will give you to very good. Since I don't get the experience, like I said, God is going to give us a better place. And that is not place to have to finance our house. But God is going to raise people of influence. Money will be natural for us. But only in the Please, if you look at so please, this is my family. Any other things we forgot in the course. God bless you. Amen. Bless you. To God be the glory. Praise you. Pastor. So lovely. Thank you.